Sandra Botticelli is Madonna and Child with Angels at the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., was painted between 1465 and 1470. This work introduces us to Botticelli as a young artist. Because his paintings of the Virgin and Christ achieve their vision of spiritual intimacy with seemingly effortless serenity, it is possible to overlook Botticelli's innovations in developing this motif. By comparing Botticelli's panel with work by his teacher, Fra Filippo Lippi, we can see Botticelli finding his own devotional aesthetic method. Born in Florence around 1445, Botticelli's real name was Alessandro Filippepi. He probably received the nickname Botticelli, which means small barrel, while he was an apprentice with his brother Antonio's goldsmith workshop. Around 1461 or 1462, Botticelli apprenticed with Filippo Lippi. Fra Lippi was a Carmelite friar and one of the leading Florentine artists of the middle of the 15th century. Botticelli worked in Lippi's studio for around five years and had left by 1467. Botticelli's Madonna and Child with Angels is therefore dated to either the last years in Filippo Lippi's studio or shortly after Botticelli became an independent artist. Botticelli's Madonna and Child with Angels strongly resembles Lippi's Madonna and Child with Two Angels of 1465. In fact, the influence of Lippi's painting can be seen in several of Botticelli's early works, including his Madonna and Child with an Angel and his Virgin and Child supported by an Angel in a Garland. Both of these works are dated between 1465 and 1467. In these paintings, Botticelli adopts Lippi's composition by seating the Madonna on the left side and in profile. The Christ child is lifted towards her by one or more angels who look out at the viewer. Of these fairly similar works, the painting at the National Gallery of Art is the most mature. Botticelli has modified his teacher's example in several ways. For example, while Lippi's angel has the coy expression of a naughty child, Botticelli's angels mournfully seek our spiritual sympathy. If there is a part of this painting that reflects Botticelli's artistic immaturity, it is the awkward placement of the background angel. Botticelli's most significant reworking of Lippi's model is in his treatment of Mary and Christ. Although Lippi's Madonna and Christ are compositionally closer together, Botticelli's mother and child are more emotionally connected. In Lippi's painting, Mary prays before Christ. Botticelli's Mary acts more like a mother by reaching for Christ. Botticelli's Mary and Christ draw closer together. Lippi's depiction of Mary and Christ fully realizes them as physical beings. This emphasizes Christ's incarnation, to which Mary responds in worship. Botticelli's composition draws the viewer more directly into the inner life of Mary and Christ. This work, like many of Botticelli's paintings of the Madonna and Child, is a portrait of their inner state of being. Botticelli exchanged the landscape background of Lippi's painting for an architectural setting in which the arch both frames and connects the figures. Lippi positioned Mary and Christ on our side of an imaginary frame. This suggests that they are a part of our world. Botticelli's architectural composition takes the sense of intimacy even further by suggesting that we are in a space with Mary and Christ that is specific, enclosed, and personal. All of Botticelli's compositional adjustments heighten the spiritual content of his paintings. From Lippi, Botticelli inherited an aesthetic of devotional painting in the service of faith. Botticelli's paintings make this spiritual reality even more directly accessible to the viewer. Lippi's capacity to represent Mary and Christ as real persons with distinctly human bodies and emotions 
demonstrates why he was one of the leading artists of his time. Yet despite their physical proximity, Mary and Christ remain emotionally and spiritually independent. In his Madonna and Child at the National Gallery of Art, Lippi's beautiful Mary powerfully evokes our sympathy. The Madonna's shadow not only suggests the presence of light and space, but also adds to the mournful emotional tone. The figure of Christ, both in his pose and in the solidity of his form, evokes classical sculpture. There is something very tender in the way that he holds Mary's hand. Nevertheless, Lippi's Mary and Christ seem remote from each other. They occupy their own individual internal worlds. By comparison, Botticelli visualizes a more intense, sacred intimacy between Mary and Christ. Lippi painted some of his most innovative treatments of the Madonna and Child in the early to mid 1460s. It was during this same period that Botticelli apprenticed in Lippi's workshop. Lippi's Madonna and Child with Two Angels depicts Mary and Christ as particular individuals rather than as types. Lippi humanizes the Virgin and Christ and makes them more accessible to the viewer. Lippi situates them not in some otherworldly realm, but rather in nature. Behind them, the landscape seems to extend endlessly. Lippi's naturalism is not confined to the facial features of Mary and Christ, but also encompasses his use of light and shadow to define their forms and space. In this work, Mary and Christ are interactive, but they remain independent. Lippi depicted Mary as flirtatious. Botticelli portrays her as more contemplative and introverted. She seems absorbed with the sorrowful knowledge of Christ's suffering. Botticelli's art is not so much focused on what Mary and Christ are doing, but rather on their state of being. A second point of difference between these works by Lippi and Botticelli is the space in which the figures are situated. Botticelli encloses Christ and Mary in a nonspecific architectural space, which is presumably a room that includes the viewer. While Lippi's pictorial narrative space extends into the far distance, Botticelli's use of architecture creates a space that is more visually intimate and that pushes the figures towards the viewer. By emphasizing the spiritual bond between Mary and Christ, Botticelli's painting becomes an image of the potential reciprocal love between God and the viewer. Even though Madonna and Child with Angels does not fully evidence the aesthetic refinement that Botticelli would develop over the next decade, we can see that already as a young artist, he is capable of painting a highly effective devotional work. Botticelli advances 15th century Florentine devotional narrative painting, not by depicting more and more dramatic subjects, but rather by making the experience of looking at the painting itself unfold in the time and space of the viewer's interaction with the panel. The narrative is not how the figures move dramatically. The narrative is how the viewer is moved profoundly. Botticelli's attention to the inner life of his subjects, as well as the experience of the viewer, combined to create a more effective devotional painting. As a work from the beginning of Botticelli's art, Virgin and Child with Angels suggests how the treatment of sacred subjects, especially the Virgin Mary, would become the highest aim and defining purpose of Botticelli's art.